the idea of systemic conspiracy is that almost all of us are are captured by by something right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that, that doesn't need to imply malice or even like a uh, uh, complacency. No, it could be literally just the runnings of like the, the uh, bureaucracy of something or the inner workings mm -hmm. and the plumbing mm -hmm. of like some type of, you know, system. Yeah. It could be as benign yeah. as that. <clears throat> and the, the literature just quickly, the, the conspiracism academic literature basically showed three kind of waves, right? The mm -hmm. first, first, second, and third waves had a different approach to conspiracy itself. And you still see all of these waves active today, mm. but it's really the third wave that interested me because it contained the two previous movements. And um, just like feminism, right? It goes through different waves, but the third wave is really more of a systemic critique. It's when the critiques aren't directed at, um, you know, uh, individuals. So there's not necessarily an individual, uh, guilt or um implication mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like uh you, so you can no longer you know point to obama or 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 uh, george bush or bill clinton or whoever the agency or, is lost right the, yeah. mm -hmm, or or their puppeteers but i kind of oh, and, and yep. nor nor can you solve the um the conspiracy theory itself right so things like jfk 9 11 those were those remain relatively unresolved to this day in the sense that there's still there's still there, there's a lot of nut job conspiracy theorizing tinfoil hat whatever but but my goal is is not to completely dismiss and disparage that but more specifically <clears throat> that um even with the sort of so-called good conspiracy theorizing you don't get any closer <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you know? right, 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 right. So the I IDW has been doing a lot of of that conspiracy theorizing, whether it's about their own suppression, they think they're suppressed, even though they have huge platforms, or whether it's about co COVID vaccines and different treatments. Yep, yep. I, you know, not having a medical background, I, I can say with confidence that that's not going to go anywhere because <laughs> it's because it's in the realm of conspiracy theory. But what I'm trying to get at with the kind of third wave and the systemic critique is for everybody to have a better literacy and understanding of where they are in the system mm. because the system is so overdetermined, so reified, mm -hmm. like, you know, this is water as David Foster Wallace would say, like it's, it's oh, all okay. Around. Yeah. Love that. It's, Love that. It's, yeah. it's mediated by technology, by language, by different metaphysical systems. And so, um, that's why I, I'm coming back to this point about Hillary Clinton. Like she, she was following some protocols as were her colleagues, as were everybody except like a for, script. Yeah. She's yeah. just following a script. Yeah. 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 And the, and the script, the script is, um, you know, very well funded, very well. <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's part of a broader, you know, s schemes of control, but, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's self legitimating, but, um, yeah, they they haven't owned the fact that their strategy did not work, right? So so Hillary Clinton comes out with a book after, like I think it's called What Happened or something oh, like right, that. Right, right, right. It's like, like it's more like you feign ignorance or they put it on <laughs> this or that, and it's like yeah. not owning the yeah yeah, yeah exactly it, yeah. exactly. And so that doesn't impress impress anybody who's who's serious about critique and about politics. Yeah. You know, we right, really right. want to see we really want to see a kind of metanoia kind of owning of one an, an atoning of mm -hmm, one's mm -hmm. fuck ups, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, but coming back to the IDW, there was nevertheless, there's a, a massive failure uh, to, to uh, engage in good faith, despite that's what they claim to be about. Right. And you still mm -hmm. have a lot of IDW fans who are like, you know, oh, they really opened my eyes in a civil civil debate, and they're they're so reasonable. Um, but if if we drill down in into that argument, it doesn't really hold up, and maybe it doesn't hold up for any of us. Like as the the Crowder versus Cedar thing kind of showed, right? We're we're reproducing the kind of conspiracy against ourselves. Ah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So this like is that. a kind of macro history approach because there's a lot of good, um, you know, H.G. H.G. Wells wrote The Open Conspiracy, and it's a really good book, just basically saying, like, you know, 
history unfolds kind of as a conspiracy. Right. So we might, we might as we, well openly conspire to make it better. <laughs> and, you know, that's a good way to put it because like, you know, the, the other oldest trick in the book is divide and conquer, you know, and it's like that you could, you can really see that when you start thinking about collective action in the sense of, of as a framework of, of knowledge, but then also participatory, like being in the world. And then the fact that collective action uh, throughout history, you know what I mean? Like, yes, there's a lot of collective action that gets to the point of maybe, you know, like nationalism, you know, Nazi Germanism going crazy. But uh, at, a, at a whole, collective action is really like stamped down, you know, any type of things like that, because, mm. you know, it's. You're, you're dividing and you're conquering, so you can it deal with with lesser units uh, of of influence, uh, etc. But then now it really seems like it's like uh, uh, what you had used um, uh, a post truth era. You know, it's really uh, supercharged. And then I don't even want to say the supercharging of the 2016 2020 um, election that we kind of uh, agreed that is one full thing. But then you could even argue that like after COVID now, and I, as you were just talking, I was thinking about how like the difference of IDW, Game B, all these other things would have happened with the extension of like in real life. You know what I mean? Like, cause the Peterson Zizek like debate was in real life. They were together and it's like, you can't, you can't, you're not going to start talking shit, but then Steven Crowder, he'll just start mouthing off on, you know, social media, et cetera, because he's really not going to meet these people in person. And so I'm trying to think of like how this kind of discourse now that we're coming into in real life that after 18 months now it's like it, which way is that going to go is it going to be uh really intense or is this maybe the opportunity to take in some of the best things of technology and then in real life because you know and put them together you know because it's like i think one of the biggest things about in in or the, or the critiques uh i talked to vinay gupta when we went to london and and one of his things that he had mentioned was you know we should really do some stuff like in-person events and so now we really you know after covid are going to try and do that because it's like well it'd be great to like do an eclectic spacewalk kind of like little meet up you know we we cohere we talk we dialogue or whatever but then there's opportunity to like meet you know in person and go skydiving do something fun mm -hmm. like maybe not that but it's like it could be as much as top us you know and so if, if more and more of these communities are more and more honest but then and keep moving into their collective action i think there is some types of uh, of possibility of not utopian thinking but more of a in a progressive light and then uh moving in that direction i think is going to be interesting now that like vaccines are out uh restrictions are, are open so i don't know if you have some type of maybe what's going to be in the future or, uh, with the in real life kind of stuff and then if that you know what we kind of can see and in, in, in that yeah um well i i don't want this to sound like callous but mm -hmm. i think like you know the expression talk is cheap mm. and and i kind of i kind of feel the same about in real life stuff like obviously we all need some sort of um you know uh real kind of physical socialization Mm, um, yeah, I can see what you're saying. It that, might be too conferency, conferency. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I'm not like, trying to say that. Yeah, yeah. Point, yeah. So, point. so you know, part of the issue here is that there, you know, before um, the pandemic, there was already a lot of in-person stuff, and it makes no difference. It's like right, right. That's people are point. still Fair. missing the the forest for the trees, sort of thing. Um, so, I'm skeptical about sort of any kind of uh, reductionist modalities that are ah, like, oh, yeah, of let's, re let's, this let's, do, that. let's do this. Yeah. And I yep, feel yep, like yep. the, the STOA is doing a lot of that. Um, I'm not saying I'm against it. Like by all means, you know, go for tapas and, and, you know, go, go to right. escape rooms <laughs> or whatever, you know, build, build solidarity. But yeah, there's, it, it leaves much to be desired in terms of where is the, you know, the real conversion practice. So there's a lot mm, of conversational, conversational practice to the point almost where it's fetishized but where is the conversion practice and you know mm. where where are we telling those stories um yeah not just the convergence of these different mm -hmm. ideas modalities of thinking everything but it's like okay mm -hmm. well what what is the goal i think that's i think maybe the thing that we mm -hmm. keep coming down to it's like well the goal is is transitory it depends on mm -hmm. what what we're asking you know it's contextual mm -hmm. and stuff and so if you put this kind of like uh, open-ended question well then you got a, a million and infinity of open-ended answers and it's like and we're no closer to convergence or conversion or coherence than mm -hmm. we really were when we started off yeah and, I, and i'm all for you know conferences and workshops and whatever 
that are working towards these goals um so long as they're they're doing it to an mm. extent that to a you know they're really pushing boundaries and achieving something rather than it just being like therapeutic or some kind of like uh, entertainment value mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so yeah you know like there, there's always this tension between like solving our personal problems and solving the world's problems. And I'm trying to say like, they, there doesn't have to be. Yeah. That right, tension, right, right. You know? Yes. Good point. Good point. Good I, point. This is precise again, precisely why, like I'll engage any type of talk about the IDW or with the IDW, but I will not accept their premises right, uh, right. of the, and the framing of, you know, how we approach um, problem solving people and dialogue. Well, I think people see that cr 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 being critical, a mm -hmm. critique, as then now like you've pushed beyond some type of element. Now it's like being critical is 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 takes on a mind of its own in like accountability or you are responsible or things like that. And it's like there's some there, but like being critical is almost the foundation of like how – I don't know, like this all came to be like, I, I don't think we, we, we get there by not being critical. And it seems like the more critical we are, then the quicker we get to the truth and the quicker we get to understanding our own biases about even going down those roads to figure out what truth mm -hmm. is, because you could mm -hmm. argue that cyclical journey into what is truth until the cows come home. But um, I think maybe one of the things, maybe the segue into um, more to the tangible things is to talk about, uh, lastly, cause we, you know, maybe about 10 more minutes is talk about your organization or the abstract mm -hmm. organization. So, um, the abstract organization is a meta think tank formed to provide global solutions to systemic problems, specializing in quote, abstraction and advanced thinking process and social critique with wide ranging applications. So I think like what you're doing is an example of that. Like we're trying to cohere and then maybe we're just not there yet. You know, you have, have kind I had some uh, experience with think tanks, lobbying, et cetera. So maybe let's just set the stage about what abstract organization is trying to do. And then maybe we do uh, like thread that needle about how we go from theory to practice, because again, like money is politics, et cetera, et cetera. And like, uh, even if it's not successful now, maybe we are putting the groundwork into like what could be uh, moving forward in a different paradigm shift. So maybe, you know, just introduce it a little bit and then we can get into what abstraction is and then kind of how we can uh, take that theories and then put them into practice. Because this collective action, I think, is is, is the through line that we can kind of keep running with that, that I, I that uh, our viewers and then you, you and I ha have been more uh, on for this conversation at least. Yeah, I think um, where to begin. So um, the project has evolved a lot. It's changed mm -hmm. from its uh, for its formative uh, version and ideals. Um, not a whole lot, but I'll explain what I mean by that because I kind of. Um, you know, drew up the plans for it, um, but never got funding, right? So it's always been kind of a, just a part-time kind mm -hmm. of passion project. And um, really, I don't know, you know, what would have been different. And if, if I had got funding, uh, I definitely want to, wanted to produce a lot of like educational content, you know, um, and, and the internet is saturated with that. You just have to know sure. where to look for it. Right. So yeah. um, because of lack of resources, but also just, other other things happening i decided not to to uh follow through with with my sort of agenda right right so but the the reason i i formed it and branded it the way i did was recognizing you know the kind of paralysis of think tanks um, the the captured nature of think tanks which at that point was like becoming well known right like mm -hmm. well established mm -hmm. that that think tanks were regularly producing um very biased, very selective kind of work. And that, and that on the whole, you know, with over six, 7,000 think tanks in the whole world, you know, there wasn't anything um, really connecting them. And so I was always interested uh, and there's some great, you know, I, my anti-intellectualism article, I open up with a kind of prologue about think tanks because there's a great mm -hmm. resources, great. There's a great resource there that I pointed to that maps out like, you know, what think tanks are, how they exist between academia and the private sector and media gotcha. and government and all these things. And so I always aspired to um, be in those spaces 
but then, you know, progressively throughout my whole life, my kind of naivete was stripped away that these, these uh, institutions are uh, high, very high in abstraction, but very low in many cases in kind of veracity or, um, uh, you know, um, ethics. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's to, a good to, way to put it. Yeah. To the point <laughs> where you have think tanks that only exist to produce like anti-climate propaganda, yes. you yeah. know, merchants and of so, doubt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so, you know, so my, my original plan was really this focus on abstraction, um, because I noticed how many different things it meant and yet how fundamental it was, you know, as a cognitive process, but as something that works throughout history and mm. is, is mm. history to mm. some extent, like you mm. can examine the relationship between, uh, kind of intellectual history and paradigms and, uh, uh, for better or worse, right? Into obviously imperialism and colonialism, slavery, all this, all this sort of stuff, war. Um, so, you know, the, the meta modern thing is to like try to synthesize everything from ancient wisdom to like futurist kind of aspirations and, uh, you know, make it real in the present and, and, um, psychoactive and transformative mm -hmm. and, uh, so anyways, I've bl bl blabbed on a lot without s s saying more about abstraction, because that's really the key. That's what yeah, it always exactly. comes back to. Um, mm -hmm. And that's an ongoing project. I don't have a conclusive answer yet. I've written about a dozen articles on abstraction, different types. But, you know, it, it goes into money, MMT, again, um, the aesthetics, pop culture, kind of all, all that abstraction. And yeah, here I'll I'll read something just so mm -hmm. we can get it on the docket or the 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 uh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so abstraction is a conceptual process of complexity reduction that highlights the essential properties or first principles of a given object or idea and analysis across different layers levels. The process has limitless instantiations uh, throughout many fields, including math, computer science, linguistics, neuroscience, psychology, but most importantly, philosophy, social theory, and artificial intelligence. So like. That right there is a very interesting way. It's a framework kind of how, how to view things and or a lens how, how, how to see it. But um, based on the level of abstraction of that lens, like how your movie kind of put it, um, it, it can get um, – pretty interesting in terms of analysis but then as soon as you start analyzing then you start seeing how the multiplicative effect of how everything's kind of uh ingrained together you know everything's mm -hmm. interconnected mm -hmm. and stuff yeah and i've i've had some insights that that have been fleeting and and hard to <laughs> capture right so I, you know i've tried to capture some insight into whatever i write and produce and and put out there um mm -hmm. because it doesn't stay in my mind you know and i think that's right 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 that's par part of the problematic of doing social philosophy is that like, we can't, we can't all be, you know, like Chomsky or Foucault or Chomsky versus Foucault. Like, you know, we're, we're in an age where, and uh, maybe we've always sort of been here, but where the intellectual problem is so complex, it, it can only be solved collectively. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, right. we don't, we don't need another monograph from, from such and such academic, right? That serves a very niche function. But what we really need to do is to have a kind of concerted collective action um, by millions of people in strategic positions, right? Even if it's just all of those people pressing the same button at the same time. <laughs> you it know? needs to happen. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe it needs to be that simple for people right, because right, otherwise right. they don't know how to, how to coordinate. Um, well, and, that, and that's a that's a good way to put it in the operating manual of Spaceship Earth. You know, Buckman's are for mm. uh, Jeremy Johnson. And I talked about that too. It's like you know the Russians are at the flight controls, the Americans are at the navigation, the Chinese are at the boot. You know, uh, mm. like cargo stuff. And it's like no one knows what's going on. You know, but then right, I wrote an essay. Right called those like updated operating manual for spaceship earth. And it was about like, it's not going to be one book, like this top down thing. It's going to be this kind of uh, collective, like uh, thousands upon thousands of like indigenous cultures, your culture, mm. my culture, everyone's, you know, geographic thing, intellectual, and then it's going to come up. And then that's the operating manual for spaceship earth. But really, like you said, the only truism, I guess you could say out of all that is that it's, it only is going to happen if we do it together. And that's like that African proverb, you know, know if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go uh far go together you know and it's like well 
we're, we're going really fucking fast. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. d- depending yeah. on how far we go is, you know, based on that, like how, how together are we, how collective are we, you know, kind of deal. Yeah. So I'm, I'm constantly disappointed at what I'm, <laughs> what I'm seeing in the world, you know, the, yeah, right. the, the failure of leftists to, to converge and consolidate, um, but especially the failure of everybody else. <laughs> right, know, right, like right, a, right, right. So yes, I'm, I'm hypercritical, which includes criticism of the political left, but only because we're in a so deeply, you know, uh, layered, um, you know, multi-textured uh, problem. Yeah, it's more like a, like a labyrinth. You know what mm. I mean? It's not necessarily even like a maze. A maze is enough like a labyrinth. Like you, mm. there are mm-hmm. many, many dead ends, uh, trap doors, you know, uh, forces at B that will, don't want you to finish, you know, et cetera. Et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I tried to pick a project that, that was way beyond me and that was like impossible for me to, um, to, to fulfill, to actualize, um, <clears throat> And also hard for people to get, unfortunately, you know. Um, <laughs> well, I hope you're. I hope you're okay with failure then, because like yeah, you're yeah. Learn, learning a lot. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I think that's 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 any uh, cr- critique of cr- critics. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I, mm-hmm. I really enjoy like uh, your your commentary, a lot of the other commentary, because it makes me think. But then at the same time, it's like, what is the next level? You know what I mean? Like, what is beyond critiquing? You know, we need to get like, do it, you know? And it's like, I think that you, you have, have kind of reached that, that limit of social commentary and, and writing and stuff like that of like, mm. well, we either need to kind of come together or a lot of these things are, you know, going to end up go from bad to worse.